Hello again. So now we're going to talk about uh, tunneling through a double barrier structure. And uh, we'll do this in the context of the emergence of band structure. I previously gave you some analytical solutions and uh, numerical observations to tunneling in a single barrier. Now we'll put this together in a, a little bit more complicated uh, structure. But the methodology is exactly the same as before, except we now, instead of having just two interfaces in the structure, we now have four interfaces. And if you look at that into a scattering matrix approach like this, uh, the methodology is, is really the same. Again, no particles lost. We inject particles from the left. We typically set the right incident wave to zero. And we can solve this uh, analytically, and I invite you to do this as an, assi as an assignment. What's more important really is to interpret the result and understanding the results that you get. So here's a brief reminder. Transmission is finite under the barrier for a single barrier structure. And it is not perfectly unity above the barrier. And there seem to be something like quasi-bound states above the barrier where the uh, transmission goes to one, the reflection goes to zero, indicating that the transmission is not perfectly one in a, a pretty wide array of energy. Now, in a double barrier structure, as sketched on the top left, um, we can actually get a transmission that is perfectly one here at a specific energy. And the reflection coefficient goes to zero, as shown here on the log scale as a deep dip. All right. And that means you can get perfect transmission through a structure um, that you could never achieve with a classical approach. So this electron wave function can tunnel through a double barrier structure and achieve perfect transmission. And um, then the, the, I, I'm not plotting here for higher energy. Some other interesting things happen as well. Now, I'm looking at the higher energies here uh, in the next slide, where similar to what we saw in the uh, single barrier structure, there are some resonant-like features above the barrier regions, and you can get uh, perfect transmission uh, for a certain energy, but you also don't get perfect uh, transmission above the barrier. So again, there is an energy modulation, energy dependence for transmission above the barrier. So now we looked at transmission through a pretty shallow um, uh, barrier structure. The barrier is just 0.2 eV tall. Now uh, let's make the barrier heights taller and see what else we can numerically observe in this structure. All right. So shown here in dark blue is the previous slide's case of a barrier height that's at 0.2. And now we crank up this barrier to 0.5 and look at the transmission coefficients. So what you see is now in the light blue, you can have a resonance here that's perfectly one, even though the electron energy is below the barrier. You also see that the attenuation of the first transmission is getting stronger because effectively the barriers are taller, so, so the reflection is going to be stronger, the transmission is going to be weaker. But you see two strong resonances in the structure. Okay. Now let's look at a similar case where we uh, don't uh, consider uh, just the, the same barrier. Uh, different barrier heights, but we look at barrier thickness. So we compare two cases. The barrier height here is at 0.4 eV, and we compare uh, a, distant, uh, a barrier height of 5 nanometers versus 8 nanometers. And you see, comparing the dark blue to the light blue, that the attenuation becomes stronger. The transmission becomes one roughly at the same energy for the lowest uh, transmission, and it uh, moves down in energy just a little bit. But still, uh, you get perfect transmission on uh, at certain energies, and you also see that the attenuation between 
these resonant states is getting much stronger as you make the barriers thicker. This can be associated also with something called a lifetime. So this model of a double barrier structure is somewhat of a, a resonator and that you can place an electron into this resonator. This could be a quantum dot and the electron could leak out and the resonance width has to do with a lifetime of this electron in this resonator. So the sharper the resonance, the longer the lifetime um, of this electron. Uh, you can also think about this as a sequential event. You inject electrons coming in from the left and the electron rattles around here quite a bit and then eventually comes out and the, you can relate the, the resonance lifetime of this electron in the system to uh, the, the width of this, this resonance. So here, if the width is very narrow, the electron will spend a lot of time in it. And if the width is broader, the electron will spend less time in it. So we can relate these transmissions to uh, similar to something like a particle in a box. It's the, uh, like a closed system. And um, we have calculated a particle in a box before. We can imagine we're replacing the, this double barrier structure here as shown in the dashed lines with a, uh, a closed system. And I'd like to compare some energies in the system uh, between the open system and the closed system. And in this uh, tool, you can also look at something called the density of states. We'll introduce the density of states further in the course, uh, but you can also think of those as the available states as a resolution of energy in a system. And we use that a lot in nanoelectronics. And what you see here is sort of the sine wave here, and you're kind of looking down at it, so you see it at one angle. Here is the second state, and it has two nodes, and they are broader. And that, again, relates to the lifetime of the state. This resonance here is narrow compared to the broad transmission you have in the upper state. You can even see sort of an inkling of the third state up here as it's starting to form over here. Okay. So, I want to relate this to a particle in the box. This is almost old territory to you now, where you have a wave function that is uh, taking the form of a sine. Um, the electron density is a sine square. Uh, you have states that are separated as a function of a quantum number, as uh, a square law, a parabolic uh, law. And uh, I can calculate those kind of um, uh, states explicitly. And numerically. So in this um, uh, plot here that you can get out of the NanoHub tool, you can now compare the, the peaks of the transmission to uh, the eigenenergies of a closed particle in a box, or a particle in a box uh, system. And um, so in green uh, indicated here, uh, the closed system particle in the box energies, and in red are the peaks of the transmission. So the first resonances down here in a low energy seem to match reasonably well. Um, but as you go higher in energy, this approximation seems to fall away. Um, here, uh, what I'm doing now is looking at a uh, thinner barriers and uh, shorter barriers and making the system uh, even less uh, bound. And here you see that the transmission really is way below um, the particle in the box energy. So you can also see particle in the box energy moves down in energy. And the system doesn't uh, resemble very well anymore the particle in the box. Uh, problem. And uh, here what we have is an open system that is getting quite open. The transmissions are going to be really strong. The lifetime is going to be really short, uh, meaning the resonances are wide. And overall, the resonances will move down in energy, similar to an, um, a, 
a resonator that has some attenuation and its resonance energy moves down in frequency. All right. There's another aspect to, to it. Why, why does this energy move down? Uh, we can plot the, the wave function of this um, transmitting electron. If we really look at exactly, say, this energy here and this energy here, we can really see how much of the electron is living inside the barrier that is classically forbidden. And then the question, of course, arises, what is the effi effective um, particle in the box width? And then you can play with numbers to make things match. But effectively, you can argue that your particle in the box, it, uh, or the box for the particle of confinement is really getting wider. So you, you can play some number games to make them match better. All right. So, uh, let me just summarize uh, a couple of key results. Number one, you can get perfect transmission through a double barrier structure. That's called resonant tunneling, and resonant because you really form a resonant state in the middle, and you can get perfect transmission of one. Um, that uh, resonance can be is a quasi-bound state. It has a finite lifetime and, or resonance width. Uh, you can relate it to a particle in a box, but you have to be careful. And as you increase the barrier height and width, um, you make the lifetime uh, longer, the resonance width narrower, so you sharpen the resonance uh, transmission. All right, and then, uh, as indicated last, the electrons can leak into the barriers and they, they can reside in the barriers. All right, so that's a key summary of a double barrier structure. And anecdotally, historically, this double barrier structure, this resonant tunneling diode, has received a lot of attention in the 80s and 90s as a potential interesting device. And you can find more about it in the lectures on NanoHub. So with that, uh, we're ready to go from single barriers and double barriers into uh, really a, a formulation of N barriers. And we'll do that in the next segment. So thank you very much.